This episode is brought to you by Grizzly, purveyors of fine machinery since 1983. And don't forget, right now you can save 10% on select machines using media code 4 eyes 10 Link to the full details in the description. This is the first piece that I ever designed and built on my own. Well, not this exact table. It was actually this one. Pretty similar. This would have been back in 2010 during the second of the night classes that I took at a community college to learn the basics of woodworking. When I finished the table, I was super happy. I loved the way it looked, and in terms of it being a confidence builder, and it giving me whatever it was that I needed to take that leap to start buying equipment and turning my garage into a workshop, it was a huge success. But as a coffee table, it was kind of a failure. Let me explain. It all has to do with this joint right here. I didn't know it at the time, but an end grain to end grain joint is, let's just say, less than ideal. And although these were reinforced, it was only with a couple of small dowels. So then I wanted to test the strength out, and I guess I took it too far and broke the whole table apart. By that time I had already moved on to other projects, and I didn't want to stop to rebuild it, so I basically scrapped the base, threw the tabletop under my bed, and here we are seven years later. Actually, let's back up another year or so. So the coffee table was totally out of sight and out of mind. And then I saw this video on George Woodshop. By the way, if you're not familiar with George's channel, definitely check him out. He's a really great designer and craftsman, and it's cool to watch to gain some insight on a real shop that's actually operating. Anyway, as you can see, the tables aren't identical, but they are pretty similar in their construction. So after watching his build, and in particular seeing how he joined the legs to the stretcher, I was inspired to put my table back together. So I dug my tabletop out from under the bed, happy to see that it was still in good condition, sanded the finish off, emptied my dust collector, and got to work remaking the base. Since I didn't need any new wood for the top, and the base really doesn't require a whole lot, I was able to build the entire thing out of a couple little chunks of leftover cherry that I had laying around. Once I put one clean edge on the piece, I took it over to the workbench so that I could mark out how I'd go about yielding the pieces, so that I could avoid another trip to the lumber yard. With that figured out, I headed over to the table saw and started ripping some pieces. Then I went back to the workbench to mark out the angles of the pieces so that I could start to refine things. Then I went back to the table saw so that I could cross cut the pieces to length. Here some of the pieces are cut at 90 degrees, and others are at 30 degrees off of vertical, so that the legs will have that splay that I seem to love so much. I'm sure the novelty of slow motion will wear off on me pretty soon, but for now, I really love this shot. I like looking at the inside of the cut. Watching all the little fibers get cut away kind of reminds me of a stop-start animation for some reason. Alright, moving on. So I went back, again to the workbench, this time so that I could mark out the tapers. And then finally, back to the table saw, yet again, to cut them out. With the leg pieces roughed out, I set them aside to start putting the stretcher together. Now, I only needed one stretcher, but I decided to go ahead and cut out two blanks. I knew I was kind of going to be testing things out as I went along. So I figured at worst, I could have a second piece to use as a backup, and at best, I could have a second piece to use as a guinea pig. After the pieces were cut out, I took them over to the joiner and planer to get them to the exact dimension that I wanted. I'm pretty sure that this piece had been joined and planed before, but it was easy enough to do it again and get it all nice and clean. Plus, the thickness needed to be something different than it was to begin with. It was really interesting to do this build over again and to use it as a sort of barometer to measure the differences in how I went about things then as a beginner versus now with a few years under my belt. I think the main difference between how I did it that time and how I'm doing it this time 
is that I thought through the whole build much more this time, and had a much better idea of the order that I should go about doing things in. Whereas when I was first starting, I would try to finish each piece under the assumption that everything would just come out in the end. Now I try to take one piece as far as I can, and then move on to something else, saving those small refining cuts for later. That way, if there's errors along the way, there's still plenty of opportunity for me to rectify them. I hope that makes sense, so I'll try to illustrate the point better in a bit. Just give me a minute. Okay, so I ended up getting it right on the first stretcher, but this was the cut that inspired me to make the backup. The most crucial thing was that the tip of the piece end up as close to that center line as possible. So for the first 45 degree cut, it didn't really matter where you made it. And as you saw, I just kind of lined it up and lopped it off. But cutting the opposite end, I was really careful and really tried to sneak up on it so that the points ended up meeting right in that center. I know it kind of looks like overkill, how much I'm sneaking up on it, but I don't know, this just works for me. I like getting that muscle memory from going back and forth. Kind of like the way that a golfer takes five practice swings before he drives, you know, even though he's hit like 50,000 balls probably leading up to this moment. To finish off the stretcher, I took my cue from Jord and used the domino to mortise out a couple of, or, well I guess, eight spots for floating tenons. Then I rigged up this elaborate jig so that I could cut miters on all the dominoes themselves. That way they'll actually fit into the mortises in the stretcher. Then I glued them in and cleaned things up. But now the stretcher's finished, so I moved back to the legs to work on those. I started by transferring some lines from one piece to another so that I could accurately cut the joinery to mate them together. Then I threw on my dado blade and cut a series of half laps. The only sort of tricky thing with this part is paying attention to which face you're cutting on which piece. Once the leg pieces are assembled, they'll look different on each side. Basically, one side has a longer looking leg than the other. Well, I wanted the longer looking side facing outwards, so that means half of the pieces should mirror the others. After the joinery was cut, I took the upper portion of the legs back to the tapering jig to finish off their shape. This is a good example of the order of operations that I was talking about before. In the past, I probably would have done this before cutting the mortises, or even starting on the stretcher. Here, as evidenced by the two holes you can see, I've wised up and cut my joinery in the pieces while they were still rectangular, rather than whatever shape you'd call this, I don't know, highly irregular pentagon? Somebody get this thing some raisin bran. Stat. Finally, I cut a 30 degree angle off the back of the leg uppers so that they'll match the angle of the lower portion. Then I could glue them up. The last thing to do to really refine the joint between the leg and the stretcher was a bit of sanding. I mated each leg with a corresponding corner of the stretcher and marked out exactly how much material needed to be removed to make it a clean transition. Then I used my edge sander to get it just right. You know, I may only like sanding, but I love thanking my Patreon members. And new to the list this month are Patrick Donovan, Jeff Bullert, Chris Bump, Jeremy Bugin, and Chris Mello, with an extra special thanks going to Rick Ratajczak. Starting this month and moving forward, I'm going to try to better show that appreciation by sending out some t-shirts. So if you're in the $10 or up tier, I'm going to be sending you one of these 4 eyes shirts really soon. You should have already received a message from me about letting me know what size you want, so if you haven't already, just let me know through the Patreon messenger so that I can get it to you. If you're interested in supporting the show too, there's a link in the description to find out more. So take a look, and as always, no pressure. Back to the build. So somehow in all of the hubbub, I forgot to record myself actually attaching the legs to the stretcher, so you'll just have to take my word for it when I tell you that it wasn't really all that exciting. But anyway, after everything was attached, I cut out four more mortises, one in the top of each leg. These are gonna be used to house tenons that'll attach the top to the base in a more designy kind of way. And since they'll be visible, 
admittedly mostly only to cats, babies, and adults who are coming to after having passed out, I decided to make them out of cherry hardwood. So I started by ripping a piece to the same thickness as a domino would be. Then I marked out the width that I would need. And made that cut. And then rounded over my tenon so that it would fit. Finally, I cross cut them to length. Here you can see that the radius of the mortise and tenon aren't exactly perfect, but they're definitely good enough for this application. And we can just keep this our little secret. To attach the base, I had to cut four more mortises on the underside of the table. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, this is the original tabletop, so you can see the original attachment points. Seven years, and as many hundred dollars later, a much cleaner result. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I hope you like what you've seen so far, and if you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's the best place to follow me so you can check out things that I'm working on in real time, not with Bill Maher. This was a really encouraging project to work on. It was really eye-opening to go through the build, Remembering all the things that I did the first time around, you know, where I struggled, the solutions I came up with, and then to compare those to the way that I'm doing things now. It's not often in life that we get such clear-cut examples of the progress that we've made. And I'm happy that I can look back at who I was seven years ago and think, man, I was an idiot. And furthermore, I hope that in seven years from now, I can look back at all the videos that I'm making today and have those same kinds of thoughts. So, to the future me, in 2024, watching this, cringing, and likely making fun of who I am now, f*** you. Special thanks to Grizzly for sponsoring this episode. Check out foureyesfurniture.com slash grizzly to see all the machinery and how you can save 10% right now. See you next time.